What is going on guys? What's going on 27 squad? Welcome back in to another video and obviously this is the off season. There's not much to talk about where we're going to try to figure out something and the vest is back. The vest is back. It took a long hiatus, but the infamous vest is back. I know a lot of you all would say in the comments, you wear it every video. Then I stopped wearing it and I had people saying, uh, you're not wearing the vest anymore, so listen, it's back. But as I said, at this time of the NFL season, this is a time where you can do nothing but speculate, but kind of think about your team and how they're going to do in the next season. The PFF came out with an interesting video that came out a couple of days ago. It's, it's titled... New York Giants reasons to be excited for 2024. Now, I am a little bit interested in this because PFF is not too kind to the New York Giants, especially um, Sam Monson and Steve, Steve, whatever his last name is, Steve P. They kind of crap on the Giants all the time, and they also crap on Daniel Jones a lot. So this one's going to be interesting. Reasons to be optimistic about the Giants 2024 doesn't seem like their cup of tea, their sort of niche uh, of, of opinion. So let's see what they have to say. All right, right off the bat, as soon as I click on the video, it says reasons for optimism for all 32 teams. So listen, I knew it. I knew they weren't going out their way to say something nice about the Giants. They're doing this for all 32 teams. So I assume it's them just trying to look on the bright side for every single uh, every single team in the NFL. So that's a little bit of a bummer, but let's hear them out. All right, reason for optimism for the Giants. Um, they finally have, they, they, instead of getting in over or ahead of their skis last year, they've actually put an infrastructure around Daniel Jones that might function this time. Okay. So Malik Neighbors in the draft, they get themselves their, their second coming of Odell Beckham Jr. 10 years after the first one. Um, they go and draft an athletic freak show of a tight end just in case Darren Waller decides he doesn't want Daniel Jones throwing him the football any further in his career. Uh, they add several bodies to that offensive line to try and overhaul that. And frankly, you know... Just the subtle shot at Daniel Jones was hilarious. I have to, I have to, I have to put that back. Hold on, hold on. That, that, um, that was actually They pretty. go and draft an athletic freak show of a tight end just in case Darren Waller decides he doesn't want Daniel Jones throwing him the football any further <laughs> in his career. Uh, they add several bodies to that offensive line to try and overhaul that. And frankly... You know, as much as there is value in cohesion on the offensive line and simply keeping the same five guys together, not when they all stink, you know? When you've got four out of the five that are terrible, you might as well just add a, a different competing body at four out of those five spots on the basis that you're probably going to upgrade almost regardless of who they are. So, yeah, did they overpay for John Runyon? Maybe. Uh, is John Runyon a big upgrade over who they had at right guard previously? Probably. I try not to interject any. All right, so right off the bat, they go into the draft, and the Giants drafted weapons. You know, they got guys like Malik Neighbors, who, as we mentioned, is probably the best wide receiver the Giants have gotten onto their team. Forget about drafting them, just gotten on their team since Odell Beckham Jr. No coincidence, they both come from LSU. And then they get Theo Johnson, who is a guy that can be used in the passing game, and Tyrone Tracy as well. Talk about the offensive line. Now, here's the thing about the offensive line. Every single year, no matter how well the offensive line is going to project every single year. I'm a Giants content creator. I've done it myself. We always say that the offensive line is going to be better this year because of this, this, and this person. Every time we uh, we add to the offensive line, it just doesn't work out. You know, we've added a guy like Kevin Zeitler to the offensive line, and we thought that he was going to be a key piece into that offensive line to make it better. Although he was great individually for us, the rest of the offensive line was still bad. We still had bad tackles, right? But now we have Andrew Thomas, so he is kind of a seasoned, you know, Pro Bowl type tackle. That uh, is one of the best tackles in the league. There's no problem with that besides his injuries. Then you got Evan Neal. We don't know what the hell's going on with Evan Neal. Even still, John Runyon doesn't make a difference in that. Even though John Runyon will be on that side at right guard, I don't know how much of an impact he's going to make on Evan Neal's play. And then you move on to left guard. We still don't know what's even happening there. Jermaine Illuminor right now is supposed to be the starter. I'm comfortable with him there. I really want him on the right tackle spot and have Evan Neal just ride the bench and then put like Josh Azudu at left guard. There's still a lot of question marks on the offensive line. Even though they are trying to be as optimistic as 
They can. I'm going to be not the pessimist here. Everybody thinks I'm a pessimist. I am a realist. There's a difference. As someone that tries to be as non-biased as they possibly can, you know, you can't help but get attacked by every which direction by the people who are super optimist, uh, optimistic about the season and super pessimistic about the season. You cannot win. I ain't gonna lie, I'm getting cooked. But to keep things in reality here, it seems like every single year, us Giants fans, even ones outside of the Giants fan base when looking at the team, always say the offensive line has improved in this in that area, but it just never seems to actually improve as a unit. Now, they may fluctuate as being a top 20 pass blocking team to a, you know, top 32 pass blocking team. You know, they're always within that range. Maybe there's an anomaly year where they, they crack the top 15 in either pass blocking or run blocking, but the Giants have for the majority of the past couple of years have stayed pretty stagnant about where they are as a unit. So I would like to believe that Jermaine Illuminor and John Running are really going to affect the offensive line and with a uh, second year center JMS you know, in his second year, hopefully he can clean up a lot of stuff that he went through last year, including the injuries. And let's hope Andrew Thomas stays healthy. And let's hope Evan Neal can at least be serviceable. Then we have a good offensive line. There's too many factors that have to go right to say we have a good offensive line. Any amount of negativity yeah. into the show. So I like to stay focused here, Sam. You've added competition at every single one of those four terrible spots on the offensive line. So the line is going to be better. The receiving core is going to be better. And therefore, Daniel Jones is going to have the season they thought he was going to have last year. Wow, you just you kind of stole mine. That one's interesting. Daniel Jones now has the best set of weapons, the best set of support that he had in his entire career. That is very true. If there is one thing to take out of, I don't know if they're going to bring up anything else in this video, but if there's one thing that you could possibly take out of this offseason going into this season, if there's one thing you can be absolutely optimistic about is that Daniel Jones does have the best supporting cast around him. So what does that mean? You have to hope for a better season than a, his 2019 season, and a better season than his 2022 season. Those are probably the best two seasons of his career. Obviously, they're the best two seasons of his career. Going into this season, 2024, the best wide receiving core he's ever had with an actual number one wide receiver option, even though he's a rookie, that doesn't matter. And then you have the best offensive line you could possibly get with Andrew Thomas now here. And then you had pretty decent free agent pickups in John Runyon and Jermaine Illuminor. So yeah, there is a lot of supporting cast around there a good tight end group as well if there's one thing a struggling quarterback really needs is a good tight end room I know a lot of people talk about the offensive line they talk about the wide receiving core but what do a lot of struggling quarterbacks always go to as a security blanket it's always the tight ends it's always the guys that are in the middle because they're they're the first person pretty much in sight when they're panicking so um, you know you got Darren Waller we don't know if he's coming back but Theo Johnson and Daniel Bellinger are pretty good guys that you can bring out there and play in those 12 personnel sets and not have to worry about one less wide receiver on the field because um, that's a good tight end group that I'm pretty confident in. Tied it all together really well. That right. was good. Yeah, this is the best supporting cast Daniel Jones has had. And you know, all, all those haters who were saying we needed to go into the draft, draft a quarterback, think about J.J. McCarthy. We don't need him. We've got Daniel Jones. And Daniel Jones <laughs> heading into year The sarcasm six, they have is hilarious. Right now, never had this. The absolute like sar sarcasm that they're that they're putting in right now because I think they're they're one of the people that really wanted a quarterback for the Giants as a lot of people did but it's just hilarious. This kind of supporting cast never yeah. had a playmaker like Malik Neighbors never had a creep back toward average offensive line like we have right now. We're getting the best out of Daniel Jones. Two years removed from leading us to a playoff win as well into the divisional round oh, to the God. final eight, the elite eight even. And Daniel Jones healthy and back. Plus we got Tommy freed up. Tommy is freed up, Cutlets, to, you know, create morale. Ah, morale. <laughs> They they are they are grasping at straws right now. They don't know they don't they do not know what else to say about the Giants. This is so this is sad, man. Oh my god. They don't know what I I think they had they gave all their reasons. They gave all their reasons. Let's uh, Shane Bowen in as defensive coordinator. And I got an AI overview for Shane Bowen, believe it or not. Previously served as defense coordinator for the Titans, twenty one to twenty three. Yeah. Bowen's defense is zone heavy yeah. in three four with an emphasis on playing fast and downhill. Being physical at the point of attack, stopping the run and creative pressures. The first press conference for every defensive coordinator. Yeah. We're going to play fast. Yeah. That's probably where they've come We're from. We're going to play the downhill. <laughs> We're going to be physical. 
We're going to be creative. Yeah. I always found it funny the way a lot of people describe defensive coordinators because they always describe them like they're the exact same person. Every time you hear a defensive coordinator and like, what, 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 a, what's about him? Like, what's his strength? Oh well, he he's very creative in uh, the blitzing game. Like he has a lot of creative blitzes. Like you've heard that from guys all the way from James Betcher. If you guys remember James Betcher, all the way to Wink Martindale. I mean, it, it, every guy is creative with blitzes. Like it just seems like that's the characteristic of every defensive coordinator has a heavy emphasis on rushing the passer i mean who doesn't but i do like the addition of shane bowen i do think it's interesting how we're switching up to like more of a zone type team the giants have experimented with playing a lot of zone mixed in with man over the past couple of years but the real goal of this team no matter who is at defensive coordinator for the past couple of years and seasons now was to be a man defense and I think man defense is the best way to go if you can do it right obviously you can get exposed in many different ways if you don't play man defense right if you don't have the right corners to play man defense but I think we right now we have decent corners to play man but it might be that it might be that second cornerback spot that's really holding it back but Andrew Phillips guys like Deontay Banks are could absolutely play in man defense but I I I am going to be okay with a heavy zone defense. Let's see how it works, but zone defenses are just a lot easier to pick apart because once you chalk it down to, okay, are we in a cover two? All right, now we got to target the, the whole shots on the sideline, and then we got to target the middle of the field. All right, what are we looking at? We're looking at cover three. Okay, now we can target the slot, the short slots, and we can target, um, you know, the, 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 two, the two seams. You know, that's what we can do. There's a lot of ways where, in which you can target you know, uh, the field and target receivers based on the coverage that they're in. You can chalk it down to that. Now, a lot of zone teams, maybe the Giants are going to do this, do a lot of disguised looks, and that can that can mess with the quarterback's game plan and completely get him off his game. But to me, if you are a team that says, listen, you see what we're in. We're in man defense. Try to score on us. Where you just got one-on-one -on -one matchups and you're not able to complete a ball, you're not able to complete a pass, that is a really good defense because now you're not having to play these mind games, you're not having to pass off and pick up players, and you're able to blitz effectively and not have to worry about the back end. I really like man defense a lot more than zone defense, but if the Giants are playing heavy zone, listen, I'm all for it. Let's let's see where it goes. Dallas, now we're on to the Giants. Yes. Now, this is more like a three, right? We brought four type of energy for the Giants. We did, but I don't think we believe But it. it's not above a three. <laughs> oh, my God. So, okay, so we got Dallas with a four with their 12 and four. Who's going to have line? like a one in optimism? We it's an get optimism. There. There's scale. a lot of Giants I mean, fans Giants that have a one in optimism for the Giants. Uh, that's not me, but there's a lot of them out there. Lower than a three if we're, we're realistic. Get there. The Giants, though, felt more like a three. All right, a three for the Giants in the optimism scale. Yeah. All right, that's fair enough. All right, so that is the video, guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Are you confident in the New York Giants going into the 2024 season? It's a very mixed bag as far as uh, the fans go this year and where they feel about the New York Giants. I see a lot of people predicting 9-8 and eight records. I see a lot of people predicting 5-12 and 12 records. So where do you guys stand on the New York Giants and how, and how confident are you in them going into next season? All that being said, guys, if you guys like the video, make sure you guys hit that like button and subscribe if you guys are new to the channel. I'm Kid Blue, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Woo!